When we bring a new data set into a GIS, we need to check it for its accuracy and consistency. And often what we find with drone data is that because the GPS on board the drones isn't necessarily as accurate as we'd like it to be, then the resultant mosaics aren't necessarily in the right location. And indeed, if you're using one of the cheaper drones that doesn't record its GPS accurate, accurately, so for example, the Spark, you can stitch together those photos, but they're not going to have any coordinates at all. So not only are they going to be sort of not in the right place, they won't even be placed on a map at all. So once you bring your bring drone data or indeed any data set into the into a GIS environment we need to have a look at look for that positional accuracy and see if we need to change it so at the moment I've got just the base map imagery in behind my drone data set here in our GIS and just for a quick check what we can do is go over to appearance and use the swipe tool and see how well our data align now this data set is pretty good because I've got this really strong feature coming through here which is a series of bricks that have been built to stop sediment coming into the boating channel. Now we can have a look at that and see you know when we're when we're zoomed out it does look like it aligns fairly well but if we want to look at this particular dog leg for example and zoom into this area here how well does it align? It's not quite on top of the satellite data so it looks like it may need to move a little bit and that's assuming that our satellite data are correct. Now the other option that we often choose to do, and we do as much as possible if we can, is to deploy some ground control points into the field. And you'll actually see that we've done this over here. Now remember this is a smaller subset of data, so we have actually got ground control points in over the larger area where we surveyed. But what you can see here is this fluorescent yellow, it's a hat actually, and we've popped that down. So it is very clear where it is in the image and we have, have used a GPS to locate that point accurately. So ideally you may have a series of these deployed out in your drone survey area and you can use those to tie in exactly the right locations for your drone data. But if you don't have that, you're going to need to geo-reference your image to another image data source. So I'm going to show you how we do that quite simply with using ArcGIS Pro here today. And so all we need to do is head on up to imagery and the process regardless if you're using the points that you've collected in the field or you're using some other data set or that you're happy with its location, you're going to go through this process of georeferencing. And basically this is how we tag the unknown image to the known image and get those coordinates to match up. So you can see that I've now got a couple of different new menu items that have popped up over the top there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some control points. So the idea is I find locations in both images that I'm I'm quite confident that they are the same feature. Now this isn't the ideal data set to be doing this with just because some of those features are really hard to tell but I'm doing this for demonstration purposes and perhaps you're using something a little bit better or perhaps not so we make do with the best that we can. So let's go with add control points and you'll see that as I move my cursor over to my image it changes to this little crosshair and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all use this dog leg on the bund wall as my first point. Now there is a bit of a trade-off between when we zoom in and when we're zoomed in too far so we can't see features and so for the purpose of this I'm going to come in a little bit closer but not too close because otherwise I'll lose that same feature on my underlying image. So I'm just going to click on the image that I want to correct first. So that's my ortho mosaic image. That's the one that's on the top. And I find that point there. You can see that it's dropped a point on. Now I'm going to tick that one off over in my table of contents and find the corresponding point in the satellite data. So that's just ticked over there. Now as I re-tick on my ortho mosaic, you'll see that it automatically applies a shift in that model. So what, ideally what I need to do now is to find a really good distribution of ground control points throughout 
my image as best as I can so that we can continue to fit that model so my, my image aligns with the image that I'm trying to georeference it to. So I'm going to go ahead and find some of those features and create some more ground control points. So I've gone ahead and added a few different ground control points and to be honest this really isn't the best data set to be working with for this but you, you get what you get and it's, that's just the way it is. So let's have a look at what I've done. I've added those control points in and just bearing in mind that you really want to be adding control points that are stable in the environment. So road intersections are a really good example. Corals that grow and die, not quite so much, but again, that's what I have. So what I can also do is pull up the, the table of the different ground control points that I've created. And so I've added in four different ones. Now you can see over on the left hand side here, they're, they're numbered. So one, two, five, and six. Now the reasons that three and four aren't in there is because they're points that I created and I wasn't happy with and I deleted them. So it's really quite easy to delete points that you're not happy with. There's two things that you can do. The first one is that you can just tick that point off and see how that affects your transformation. So let's go ahead and we've got this one selected. So the row is selected. Let's have a look at which point that is. If we zoom out a bit, you'll be able to see that that's this point just up in the upper right hand side that I've created. Now, if I tick that one off, you'll see the effect of that in the transformation. You see how it just shifts a little bit. And maybe, maybe there's no reason for that. So maybe it is that you want to keep that, but maybe you realize that you had put that point in a completely wrong spot. Want to, ch to check whether or not it's, it's gonna make a difference. So you, you turn it off first before you delete it. So if I had decided that that wasn't a good point to be keeping, then I can just go up here and delete the selected point there. I am okay with it though. So I'm going to keep that in and I'm gonna say that I'm quite happy with that transformation. Now up the top here, you can select different types of transformations to use. Now it's going to depend on how many points that you created as your ground control points as to which type of transformation you're able to use. Because I only have four points there, I have a very limited option of the transformations that are available to me. Now, if I was to go ahead and continue to find more control points, then I would have more and more different options become available. Now, the reason that this is important is because it just depends on the type of data that you've got. Now, generally, what I find with with mosaics done with drone data, they are generally of high quality. They just tend to be a few meters shifted out of location. And that's just due to using a standard GPS on board the drone. So they may be sort of plus or minus five meters out. And most times the first order polynomial transformation is going to get you where you need to be. But this is really something that you need to test with your own data and look at the different models and what you're really trying to do is to reduce these numbers in the residual. So these are numbers that are effectively suggesting how accurate the model is. So have a bit of a test and adjust and work out how the model looks in terms of the output of your data and its location before you decide what the right model is for you to use. But I'm happy with this first order polynomial, so I'm going to keep it with that one. And now what I really would like to do first is to export my, my control points. So that way, if something happens, I do have these control points and I can apply that transformation again. So that's going to, to save me time next time if I have a crash, for example, not crash of the drone, but crash of the software. So let's go ahead and export those those control points. All right, so once we've exported the control points, what I actually want to do is to save my transformed image as a new image, and that will be the one that I subsequently continue to work with. So I'm just going to go up to save as new, and I'll find myself an output raster data set, which is where it's going to store that image for me. So let's have a look at where it's defaulting to go. So here's where it wants to create that image for me. And I'm just going to tag it that it's been geo-referenced as well. That way I have a bit of a, an understanding through the file name what's happened to that particular image. So let's hit save on that one. And I'm going to keep 
the defaults there. So I'm happy with that coordinate system. I know that that's my local coordinate system and happy with all of those other output defaults there as well. So if we hit export, that's going to create that new file for me. And then I'll be able to, to use that as I continue in my processing.